So today we are talking with our friend Liz, who I, we followed her online for a few years now. Yeah, I followed her because she's a uh, Chattanooga. Or she used to be from Chattanooga. She grew up in Chattanooga, spent like her high school years in Chattanooga, and that's how I discovered her. Another friend featured her, and I thought this girl's cool. I want to follow her. She trail runs and she travels, and that's really cool. Um, and for the last couple of years, we've gotten the chance to follow Liz and her many travels and moves, and that's what she's going to be here talking to us about today. It's a conversation that we start in one area and then it diverts like true form to a normal conversation and then it comes right back to what we're here about. And it's one of the best conversations that we've had so far on the podcast. I agree. Liz is a natural conversationalist. That's the right word, right? Conversationalist? Yeah. Sounds yeah. weird. Yeah, she's she's just very animated and very bubbly and she's just fun and she's very insightful. So we had her on to talk about starting over, specifically with moving, big life changes. Maybe you're in your uh, 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever age you are and you're contemplating a big move or you have recently taken that big move and you're trying to figure it all out with all that change that comes with it, uh, this conversation's for you. And even if, even if you don't have a big change on the horizon, that's something you're not really considering, maybe this conversation will encourage you to pursue a little bit of change, even if it's just in the everyday. So we'll get into it. It's a lot of fun. We talk uh, countries we've visited and experiences we've had and all sorts of things. So let's get going. Let's go. So Liz, just tell us What's your story? I know that's a big question, but who are you? Where are you? What do you do? That kind of stuff. Yeah, that's always such a hard question for me. I feel like who that answer changes quite a bit. Um, who I am? I don't know. I'm still figuring that out. A little bit about my story. So I have moved around since I was a kid. I was born in Plymouth, then lived in upstate New York, Chicago, Chattanooga, went to school in Memphis, then I went to DC, then I went to Silicon Valley. Um, and I have just been kind of constantly on the move, chasing new horizons. And I just rooted in Bend, um, and it feels like the first time I'm actually planting roots and very intentionally, and it's feeling really good. And can I ask what kind of work you do, just out of curiosity? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, this is the, the one of the biggest questions I get um, on social media. It's like, what are you actually do? <laughs> so I do freelance brand marketing. So that is like my like my proper like I have my own little company. I mostly work with VC firms. Um, helping them identify brand identity. That's, you know, voice, tone, aesthetic that is helping social media, that is helping them like kind of take an idea and make it a tangible thing. Um, And then I'm working on transitioning into something a little bit more, I don't want to say life coaching because that feels wrong and I don't like that. Um, But I am working on um, building some foundations for um, mental health and um, helping people with that. A lot of that you can do anywhere in the world. Is that correct? Has that allowed you to travel a lot and just move around? Exactly. It is like no bounds. Like it is completely whatever I make it, which is really nice. Love it. So we do a similar thing. We have done like web design, graphic design for, Chris has done it for 15 years and I've been along for the ride for the last, I guess, seven or eight years. Yeah. But moving around is, it's been our our habit for the last seven years, especially. We love it. I don't think I could ever go back. I don't know. I mean, I remember early on in my career, I was freelance and I was able to do do it wherever, whenever. And for whatever reason, it took me a long time to really like understand that. Literally, I don't have to be here in North Carolina or Kentucky. I can be anywhere in the world and do this. And as long as it, I get my job done, it's fine. And it sounds to me, I mean, you've moved around a lot. Like you have, you know, you've started over quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that process, about starting over, about going to a different place. I mean, like, like luckily for you, your job, you're able to do that, right? And so what's the process when you go to a different town or a different city and that's where you call home? Yeah, Chris, I felt the exact same way when I started to go remote. I still felt this deep sense of, I need to be in front of my computer for eight to nine hours a day. And it was a big transition for me to let go of that and to realize, oh, I actually have flexibility. I'm getting my work done. I can go for a run in the middle of the day, or I can stop to take the dog for a walk, or I can just like step away for a few hours and not feel this overwhelming sense of guilt. But once I started to unfold that, and that really happened, I would say during the pandemic, where I was like, I don't need to be sitting here. Like I'm getting my work done. I'm getting ahead. I'm I'm available if I'm needed but I don't need to be sitting here. Um, so that time period, you know, that 
very long time period, you know, during the pandemic, I think that was the first step. And then I was like, wait, I'm learning the habits to step away. So when I was traveling, I still felt a little bit of angst. I'm like, Ooh, I'm not on Slack. Is that okay? Are they going to be, are people going to be mad? I'm like, Oh no, I'm still getting my work done and I'm still available. And it was, you know, a little bit of a transition, but I think when I'm traveling, my, my, the first thing I'll usually do is make sure that I have good Wi-Fi, make sure that I can be connected, checking my email, but being really communicative when I'm traveling. I think in the beginning I was like, oh, I shouldn't tell people I'm doing this. And it's like, no, no, you guys know who I am. You guys know what you're like, you know who you're working with. Like, this is what I'm doing. I'm available here. I'll be back then. And that's been a game changer for traveling and just setting up meetings that work the best for everyone with time changes. So just like really it's normal life, just somewhere else. So you've mentioned two different kinds of starting over traveling and then moving. Yeah. So I guess before we get into like the whole moving thing, you travel a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, is that, and I know from following on social media, you're a big trail runner and that kind of thing. So when you travel, is it for work? Is it for fun? What, what kind of travel are you doing? I would say right now, it's not for work at all. And I think I, I travel very similar to, similarly to how you guys do. It's not like vacation. It is an opportunity to immerse in a culture. And that has been the biggest driver for me. It's to see a new horizon and really experience it as if I was living there and integrate as much as I can, um, which can be hard. I will say my biggest motivator lately is places with big trails, big mountains. Like I'm highly motivated by mountains. So even this last trip to the Azores was like a choice for trail running. Like it was an opportunity to spend a lot of time outside. Like the places that you can really just be outside bulk of the time are like the drivers for me. Same, same. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That's one reason why we love Bend. It's just like the trails and the accessibility to it. I and mean, we love Chattanooga for the same reason, but mm -hmm. yeah, Bend is something special. We absolutely love Bend, Oregon. Yeah. So, oh no, we'll I was going to ask about like the, the bigger picture of starting over. So starting over you just moved to Ben, and I know you mentioned that you've moved several times over the last few years. Why Why do you move a lot? Like, what's the motivation there? Is it because you love it? Is it because you just find that you need life change or jobs or what What has, what has made you a professional at starting over? That is such a good question. And I've been trying to think about it the last few days. I'm like, why do? I think when I was younger, the reason I would move was I was searching for something. I was looking for this perfect thing, this perfect place to find something. And I don't think I ever knew what I was looking for. And even in the last few years, I kind of was just kind of seeking. I don't know what I was exactly seeking, but in this last move to Bend, I realized like what I'm seeking is like inside of me. Like it is a me thing. And I was looking for new horizons to be my answer, but the answer was actually within me. I know that sounds like kind of like very hippy dippy and high level. And I think it took me kind of moving so many times and trying and failing. Like I, before Bend, we were in Squamish for a year and I just couldn't make it work. And I didn't know why I'm like, this place is stunning. It has trails. Like people are nice, but like, I couldn't get into like a friend group. I couldn't get into like, I couldn't get into myself. And I don't know why. And it was just like, I'm trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. And it just didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't trust myself enough to be like, Hey, this isn't working. Let's just try someplace new. Like let's just try someplace new. And when I came through Bend, I was here in 2019, really loved it. Came through a couple times in the fall and people just like talked to me in the grocery store and the trails were beautiful. And I kept saying, I'm like, I feel like I'm in a Hallmark movie. Like people are kind. This is beautiful. The trails are epic. And I was like, you know what? I don't understand why, but I think I need to be here. And I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to like, there's no reason not to do it. I, like change. I fully believe like change is going to happen. It's just a matter of like, do you lean into the choice or let it happen to you? And I was like, I got to, I got to lean into this and I don't know why. So I think, I think curiosity has been a huge driver for me. It's like, I was curious about Squamish. I was curious about Bend. I was curious about DC. I was curious about you know, San Francisco. And it's always just led me into the next seeking and curiosity. So when you're going or when you move to a different place or maybe you travel and you're there for months or weeks at a time, mm -hmm. is it hard for you to get the, the routine, the, um, like consistency? Like, I mean, for me, like personally, I, Sarah and I are very different in this way. I, I'm the guy, like I want the, the person rolling my burrito at Chipotle to know my name. Like I want the barista to like say, Hey Chris, like I want that like consistency, mm -hmm. but Sarah, 
is she's an Enneagram seven. If Me if you know what that means, too. it means it's like oh, yeah. I could have guessed that. So, so do you seven all the way? Yeah. So I mean, as a seven, like, sevens can spot other sevens really fast. Yeah. So like, but she she's more not more. I mean, you love people. You love I do, you love but consistency, but I love change, constant change, like. If it weren't for Chris, I think I would probably live in a van for the rest of my life and I'd be in a new city probably every month or two and then circulate back around as the seasons change. Like that's me. Like I love change, but that's also like my greatest downfall too. Cause I don't like to be in a place long enough to put down roots, which mm-hmm. I think COVID was probably a little bit of a wake up call for me. I realized like we were forced to put down roots for a little bit and it's been good. But, um, so I've learned that like stability is nice every now and then, but Chris yeah. on the other hand, like he is, he likes the routine, but yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that. No, class. I mean, like, but like when you, but, but like when you go to a new place, when you like you've moved to Bend, mm-hmm. oh, what does consistency, what does routine look like? Well, what, what does that look like for you when you go to these new places? It's messy. I think this is the thing that no one sees on social media is that it's like unpleasant and uncomfortable, and it is like I, it's like kind of chaotic. I would say that the routine takes a while. I think I have like base level things, especially one thing that I prioritize is like, I have a pretty boring diet and I'm like, okay, if my food's relatively consistent, the rest can be chaotic. Um, and I would say, especially when I'm traveling to like a new place, I have my base, like I like cooking at home. I like going out maybe to eat once a week. And I, I'm kind of like, I want to try all the coffee shops and then I'm going to choose one. And I'm going to be like, that is now my favorite coffee shop. And then ideally I like know the barista's name. I feel the same way. I'm like, I want to try it all. And I want to be rooted. So I'm sitting almost between the two of y'all and and like, I am lusting for that change. And I'm also like deeply craving that stability and that like knowing like to be known is such an incredible gift in a community. So like even moving to Bend, I would say the routine is messy. Like I am trying new trails and I'm like, that was terrible. Like I did not like this or it was too cold. It was too hot. I like, I don't know. It's, it's kind of just a trial and error. And this is so much of like, this is not seen. It's like, it's just kind of disastrous and chaotic for a very long time. And I'd say even three months in, I'm still messy and chaotic. And I'm still like, I know which coffee shop I like best, but I'm like, what trails I haven't been here in the summer. I'm like, Oh, I can't go to Smith rock anymore. It's a million degrees and there's 3000 snakes. Like And I'm like, now what am I going to do? Where am I going to hike? Like, that's the the, like anxiety of like, now what? I have to figure out this like next thing is always kind of lingering, but it's like, do I see that as like scary or do I see it as like, ooh, this is exciting. And like, do I get to learn and figure things out? So it's tricky. I would say my routine is still not nailed down. I am, I'm, it's little things. It's just like tiny little chunks that I'm nailing down. Coffee shops, you know, my favorite burrito place, like stuff like that. Like you got to chunk it or you're going to get super overwhelmed. Do you feel like, I know you mentioned mental health and that being pretty important to you. That's sort of like a season you're heading into with work. You're going to kind of grow your job in that way. But do you find that you lean more into scary when your mental health is in one season and maybe more excited in another? Because I know for me, like when I'm anxious or depressed, like I lean more into scary. But yeah, when I'm mentally healthy, everything's exciting and new. And I absolutely love that. And so those are the seasons I really like starting over and change. Is that true for you or... I don't know where I'm going with that question. I know exactly what you're saying. And a hundred percent. See, I think when I'm feeling scared, I let my, I'm, this is, this is taking me a really long time. I let myself be scared. And maybe it's like, I don't go out for the day. I let myself stay in my hotel room. I let myself just like be on my phone. I let myself call friends. I let myself like ground in my nervous system. I think that's the biggest thing is I used to just force it and be like, get out there, Liz. And I'm like, that's one way of doing it for sure. But I think as I've gotten older, that taking that moment to just be like, oh, this sucks. Like, this is hard. Like, this is a hard thing. And I need to just like, let myself feel like it's hard. And then tomorrow is a new day. Like, if I let myself feel, really feel the fear one day, the next day I'm like, oh, well, like, I think I'm ready to like go out and and see the change. I'm going to do one small thing. I'm like, can I do one small thing today? So I definitely notice the differences. Um, And I, I feel it sometimes day by day where it's like, I'm scared. And then I'm like really excited. And then I'm scared. And then I'm really excited. And I just like, kind of let, I try and let it flow as much as I can and trust that like everyone's feeling it, even if they're not talking about it. Yeah. That's good advice. Just leaning into it for a little bit because I don't know, I guess I'm one of those people who just likes to stay busy. And sometimes I'm guilty of just staying busy. So I don't feel anything, especially 
something that's making me scared or anxious, but got to work on that. Mm -hmm. Chris is good for that. Like we, we balance each other, but we do. I feel like we do balance each other, <laughs> you know, but then sometimes one of us, the pendulum will swing the opposite way and then we'll get caught up. Like we'll feed off of each other's emotions a little bit sometimes be like, you know what? This is the worst day ever. <laughs> Everything, it, Everything we're all sucks. going to die, and it's going to be miserable <laughs> yep. this entire, you know. And then the other side, we're like, "This is amazing! It's everything's Disney, and yeah." So, but I feel like for the most part, we balance each other. Yeah. And not to sidetrack, but I do want to know because I always like to keep a checklist. Mm. What is the coffee shop and Bend? Like, what's oh, what's yeah. the coffee shop's name? Well, it depends. So, like vibes wise, I really like the Commons. They, it's like very cute. It's like downtown Bend. It's right by the river. It's like an old house cottage that I just I just love. But I'm a I'm a sucker for back porch coffee. Like I go and get their bags of coffee and I grind it at home and I love yeah, their coffee is fantastic. There's so many of everything in Ben. Like the breweries, the coffee shops, the I mean, there's just everything. I love it. It's paradise. I feel like we shouldn't talk about it too much because it's growing so fast. I don't want everybody to know, but I love it so much. <laughs> But okay, so you love Ben, but I'm curious, like community. Like you mentioned briefly, uh that you mentioned something briefly about community. So how like our biggest struggle, and I think a lot of it's 20 something, 30 somethings, we all struggle with finding friends. Like it just gets harder and harder the older you get. Where, what does community look like for you as you're traveling, as you're at home? Do you go to running clubs or, I mean, I don't know. Like what, how are you making friends when you're constantly on the go? Oh my gosh, this has been the great like challenge and like question mark of the last few years of my life. I kept saying, I was like, especially, I think COVID really woke me up and being like, my friends are all over the place. And like, I don't have a community where I am. And I was like, this is something I am seeking. And yet I still feel compelled to travel and how to make friends. I'm still learning that I am putting myself out there as much as I can, but also social media has been great. Like I have met a ton of people on social media. Like I was in Chamonix, uh, I guess a year, uh, two years ago now. And this wonderful woman, Isabel messaged me. He's like, Oh, I live in the Valley. Do you want to get a coffee and go for a hike? And I, now I love her. And like, just by happenstance, I put myself out there and I'm like, I, you know, we, whenever I go back, I see her and she is incredible. I would say, you know, there's been times where I've met people and I'm like, okay, this was really nice to meet you. I think the one pitfall of meeting people on Instagram is like, they might already have an impression of who you are. And that's a little scary because they're like, oh, I know you. And I'm like, oh, there's so much more going on. Like <laughs> there's so much more going on. So uh, Instagram can be a great tool as long as you're meeting and being like, hey, I'm, I'm, I have enough curiosity about you to like be open. I, that's been a great tool. Also, even with my friends being in different places, we are like deeply committed to voice notes. My best friend is currently in Ireland and we voice note all day long, like random stupid things or just like things we're thinking about. I saw a cool cloud. Here's a picture. And it's like that constant little bids for attention where we're like, hey, we're still, even though you're thousands of miles away, you're like highly engaged in my life and I'm highly engaged in yours. And voice notes kind of take the pressure off of responding. Like phone calls feel a little bit stressful because it's like, oh, let's find a time. We got to be really paying, we have to be paying attention. And it's like, hey, it's when you have five minutes to listen to this voice note, take it, take a listen. I have found that has been great for community. Building it in person, I'm still working on that. I wish I had like a golden answer to that. Putting yourself out there, even though it's like hard and scary. I've gone to a couple of running meetups, but I like find that we just talk about running and then I'm like, I'm overwhelmed. Um, so I just, <laughs> right. I was like, this is, it was fun. And I was like, this was really hard, but I'm like, okay, maybe this isn't for me. So I went to like a right. stained glass class just for fun and met some like cool women there. I'm just, just putting yourself out there. And I think going to coffee shops, being open to people talking to you, I think that's such a taboo thing right now where it's like, I think probably COVID made us all kind of like suspicious of one another. But if like you see someone's cool top, you're like, hey, I really like your shirt. And you're like, how's your day going? I'm just still trying to get better at that. I think it's just like being open and like communicating and being like, well, I'm just going to say hi. And like, what's the worst that could happen? They like, are having a bad day and they don't respond. It's like, okay. I'm I'm such an introvert. Like, I like that you said that people see you on social media and they think that, like, they already have those expectations of what you're going to be like. Yeah. That totally happened to me yesterday. I went to a new doctor here in town and she walked in the room and she was so nice. Like, if she happens to listen to this, like, she's so kind. I loved it. But she's like, I know you. And I, like, instantly froze up because it makes me so nervous. And I, like, I'm well, so quiet in person. Especially at the doctor's office. It's like, <laughs> it's oh, very vulnerable, this is going to get real personal real fast. <laughs> It did. 
It got yeah. very personal, very fast. <laughs> but she was so cool. Like she was really nice. And at first, like after a while, I was like, okay, she knows me. Like she knows I'm traveling a lot. Like she knew what to expect. Like with my questions. Like so it was nice. It actually really was. But there's definitely that like expectation of people or somebody people have expectations of us like I'm a naturally an introvert like I'm very quiet and so I always feel like I disappoint people that I'm not crazy and bubbly like I am on YouTube or whatever yeah. but yes yeah, so that's a little stressful yeah well and Liz I feel like you're very optimistic you're very smiley and bubbly and and I don't know if you're an extrovert introvert if you turn it on and then as soon as the camera's turned off you're like thank god let's just go back home and like <laughs> you know curl up in a blanket like are you are you this optimistic in real life, are you this happy in real life? Or like, let's let's dive into yeah, that. Yeah, because right? I feel like optimism has a lot to do with starting over. Like, yeah. you have to have a good attitude about starting over. Yeah, that's a it's a great question. I don't know if I'm always this optimistic, but I am always this enthusiastic. Like, the enthusiasm is always there, even if I'm in a bad mood. Like, I'm like, we let's do it. We're gonna. This is gonna be an interesting story. Like, gotta trust this is for us. Like, let's let's see what happens. And there, I do have like. I think one thing people don't know is I could do have like bad days or even like on long runs. I did a, a 20 mile race this past weekend and like 18 miles in, we had gotten lost and stuff. I was like disgruntled. Like I was not a happy camper and I was just like grumpy and quiet. And I, I have these moments and they're like normal. Like we're all human. We all have them. And I do think thanks to life and the life I've had to lead, it's like, I don't know. There's, I find that being more optimistic and being more enthusiastic is just a, a better way for me to move through life. It's more who I want to be. It's how I want to present to the world. So I think it is real. I, I do think this is the one thing I will say is that I have been told once or twice when I meet people, I come across as like super enthusiastic and optimistic. They're like, you seem a little fake. And I'm like, I swear this is normal. Like it, I like, Truly, people have been like, it comes off like you're just like really like over the top. And I'm like, oh, crap. Like, that's not what I'm trying to do. So it's a great thing for me. I do think sometimes it can rub people the wrong way because they're like, ooh, what is she actually like when she drops this? And I'm like, it's pretty much the same, except maybe like having a bad day. Like there's just like an extra layer. So it's a little tricky, but it is true. It's optimistic. Yeah. No, I mean, but I feel like that's it, a gift though, to be that it, optimistic. It is a gift. And I feel like people are probably attracted to that or they want to hang out with you more. I'm like, like, Hey, I, I need to pick me up. Let me hang out with Liz. You know, like, like she's you're fun. Just, yeah, let's she's hang fun. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you said that you have friends all over, which we do too. And that's part of why mm -hmm. we don't mind starting over. And, and by starting over, I mean, living in a van for a few years and traveling from city to city whenever we felt like it. But that's part of the fun for us is that we do, we have more friends in every corner of this country than we do in our own town here. Like we yeah. have friends here, but our community is in every corner of this country or world. And I love that. So for us, like I feel like our friends and our friends, especially maybe family is a little bit more resistant, but our friends are really encouraging of the life that we lead as far as being spontaneous and always on the move. But I don't know. There are people out there who maybe be a little more reluctant like they're not mm -hmm. as encouraging because they don't fully understand it. it's like is your community like your strong community that's all over are they supportive of that or does that ever hold you back because i know for us in seasons there have been times where we felt guilty for what we do like the mm -hmm. choices we're making like we felt selfish for you know not wanting to invest in the people that we love so much and be in the same place but mm -hmm. at the same time it's not not how we want to live. Oh, God, that resonates. That makes sense. That sounds really selfish, I guess. <laughs> well, no, I mean, but you can... I, it resonates. I mean, yeah. You get, it. Yeah. You get it. I, it resonates. It makes sense. I don't think it's selfish. I think it's, again, different priorities for different people. And I have I felt this. So my two best friends are Nick in Maine and Elizabeth based in Vancouver, um, Canada. They're both... Their whole lifestyle is to have a, root, a rooted place and then they just travel. So Nick will go off and travel for six months. Elizabeth's in Ireland for three months. Like I have, I don't think it was intentional, but I have surrounded myself with people who are built in a similar way where it's like, I want to be rooted and have a community. And I get the appeal of travel. And, you know, we talk about travel, like, you know, we're shooting ideas back and forth. Like, what do you think of going to Turkey? I'm like, oh, that sounds fun. Here's some, some thoughts. Here's some videos I've seen. Like, I think it was like a gravitational thing. Like I, both of these people just kind of like came into my life and the, the relationship naturally, naturally got a lot stronger because we have the same priorities. I think I have friends who are more rooted and it, I did feel, you know, some guilt. And I feel like I've seen this with my friend Nick and his community where he 
feels a lot of shame for talking about travel and being like, oh, I did all these cool things. And they're like, oh, like, that's cool. Because it's not, they just don't understand. And they don't have the same kind of prioritization around like going and experiencing that. And that's beautiful. As long as you're not shaming other people, just like, I think those people naturally fall away just kind of easily because, you know, they're, it's, they're living a very different life. And maybe they're like, "Mm, I don't get it. I don't understand what you're doing. And I think there are people out there that do. And I, yeah, I'm trying to, I try to pull those people in more, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, you, that totally makes sense. And I, I agree with you. Like, I feel like people, I don't know. We do have friends who they have very different ways of life. And some of those people who have very different, you know, maybe they are three kids in and they are, they don't travel at all. Like some of them are sympathetic or not sympathetic, but they, they understand where we're traveling Mm -hmm. and like they understand that lifestyle and they're supportive of it. And so we see each other in seasons and the friendship still remains. And then there's other people who have that same kind of lifestyle, but they don't get it. And so those are the ones that sort of just, you know, as sad as it is at times, they sort of just, those friendships sort of fall by the wayside and you just, they do kind of naturally weed themselves yeah. out, which and is hard. It's part and of I feel change. like you can tell during a conversation too. And I always have to check myself. Am I like humble bragging about where I've been right now? Mm-hmm. Or is, are they truly not interested, you know? And mm-hmm. it's, um, I, I feel like you can tell over time conversating with people. You're like, okay, I, you're not understanding my, mm-hmm. where I'm coming from. You can kind of get that natural read on someone. You're like, oh, they're intrigued. And if they're asking questions, I think that's the thing is like, are they expressing curiosity? Yeah, yeah. I, I get the other like one friend in particular, lover, but we've definitely like parted ways a little bit just naturally. Yeah. And I remember I was talking about like living in a van. She's like, well, when are you, when are you having kids? And I was like, uh, I don't, I don't really know. And she could just, you could see the glaze go over her eyes of just like, I don't understand like why you're living in a van at 30 years old. Like, what yeah. are you doing? And that's okay. Like she, I mean, she's a great, like her life is, she's thriving. It's just not for everyone i think everybody's lives are built to be very different yeah but then on the flip side when it comes to us and we're talking to people who aren't living like i mean i feel like we could talk to you all day long we have a similar lifestyle and we're like oh we get it like we're excited about it and then we meet somebody who is maybe doing more of a traditional lifestyle whatever it's not where we're at currently Mm -hmm. but it still falls down on us if we're interested in their life as well so Mm -hmm. when it comes to talking to people who may not get it or who are living a very different life than you um how how do you go about interacting with those people who don't get it who are completely 180 from you yeah i the my kind of thesis and as i am i i'm i am curious about everything and even if they're not curious about me maybe they can teach me something maybe there's something that i'm not i don't know so i just express curiosity about their lifestyle because i don't get it like I don't have the same priority, but I'm like, ooh, like you bought a house? Okay, like what is home ownership like? Like, I don't know what that means. Like you had to fix a water heater? Like, is that expensive? There's something to learn, I think, from everyone. Even if they're not reciprocating the interest, it's like there's an opportunity for me to grow through this person who's coming across my path. And it it hurts a little bit because you're like, ah, I really, I want to be seen too. But I'm like, if I can shine the light on them, they can teach me something. I'm going to get that light back. Like, it's going to be great. I'm going to learn, even if it hurts my feelings, just the tiniest bit. And it's like, I, that's, that's, it's an ego thing for me where I'm like, I want to talk about my travels. And I'm like, you know what? The right person who wants to hear about my travels will come along. Like, it's fine. <laughs> that's so good. You're right. Yeah. I mean, I think we do have friends in just about every niche and every place. And I, I do love that. And there's something to be said about having a variety of people around you. Like maybe your closest circle has you know, similar values to you, but keeping yourself surrounded by people who also share different mm-hmm. different lives, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's very important. Like I don't fully understand where a lot of my friends are coming from, but I love watching them and I love seeing how they happen to manage three kids, of, you know, in three different schools. And like, it's mm-hmm. crazy. I'm like, how do you do that? So I don't know. I think, yeah, that's, that's a good piece of advice. Yeah. We sort of like tiptoed around it a little bit, but like we said, our audience is largely 20s and 30s. Mm-hmm. Do you have any just basic advice? Like, for starting over or if somebody possibly has a job or opportunity across the country, like what would you say if they were trying to be brave and take that choice, but they aren't quite there yet? Mm. Yeah. I've been thinking about this question. What is the advice even I would give to my younger self? And I think the biggest thing and that I kind of got caught up in for a very long time, and it's very easy to, I think in society, it's like, what should I be doing versus what do I want to be doing? I think this is Mm -hmm. the age old advice. It's like, you need to listen to your intuition and not do it for your parents' approval, your friends' approval or social media. It's like, what feels best for you? And I think keeping in mind that we're all conscious beings with choice, like we get to choose. 
and cho- like change will happen regardless. You can let it happen to you or you can like actively participate in it. And I wish there was a couple of times where I'm like, I, w- I, sh- I wanted to be more of an active participant instead of just staying stagnant and hoping that nothing will happen or nothing will change. And like change is constant and like get ahead of it. Be, be brave. It's scary, but know that like if you're listening to yourself, it's going to be okay. But you did say something I kind of want to ask about, which is that you didn't start traveling internationally until you were 27. That, that's what I was going to ask about. I <laughs> So I went on one trip to Scotland when I was in eighth grade, and that was not with my family. It was like a school trip kind of thing. And I didn't travel again until I was 20 – how old were we when we got married? 26, 25? I don't know how old I was. But it was older. And I feel like – I was sort of, I still am sort of embarrassed to be like a travel vlogger or whatever. And I've only been to a handful of countries because I didn't grow up traveling internationally. Like, I feel like I was a late starter to that, but I think that's okay. And in some ways, I love that I can appreciate it in a different way. Like, I didn't go to Paris for the first time when I was 13 years old. And I don't, I mean, I've never been to Paris. So I'm excited to be, go there when I'm in my 30s and experiencing it with a little bit more, hopefully, maturity. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a question in there. There was something, I just thought that was really neat that you didn't start till later. Are you glad you started later? Or, I mean, it seems like it's a huge part of your life now. Yeah, that's such a good question. I, it's such a big part of my life and I still have imposter syndrome around it. I think that's the bigger thing where I'm like, oh, am I allowed to be calling myself a traveler or like an international like country hopper? I don't know if I'm allowed to. I feel that like imposter, obviously I'm allowed to. I've been a lot of beautiful places. I have a lot of privilege in being able to do that. But I, I'm grateful that I finally did it. I think that's a big thing is like, it's really easy to see a number and be like, well, I haven't traveled, I think, you know, till I was in my late twenties. And like, this is my opportunity. Is it too late? Like, am I missing my opportunity? And there's like such, there's always an opportunity to like get wrapped up in the numbers. And I am grateful that I did it. I think that's the biggest thing is like, I'm just glad I like didn't let numbers get in my head. Cause yeah, so many people do exchange programs or international travel. And I think even now, like most of my friends have traveled when they were in their early twenties, but I, it doesn't phase me. I think I was able to travel better because I was like a little bit older. I, I think my like full brain was developed, which was helpful, but, um, yeah. You answered a question. I didn't fully ask all the way. That's good. Yeah, it's, no, it, I think it, I mean, it's something that we always struggle with, you know, a lot of just that imposter syndrome, the imposter syndrome for us comes from the, like our age. And then we go to these places and then we'll have these 12 year olds, 15 year olds or whatever comment and say, oh, I just love the the biscuit in Paris. What do they eat in Paris? Or uh, the, what's croissants. the, yeah, croissants, not the biscuit. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, you. the baguettes. Any yeah, bread, yeah. just pick a bread. <laughs> yeah. And not that we compare ourselves all the time, but it's, but it, naturally it happens. You, you see people and you're like, wow, your world experience at the age of 18, you know, 20, whatever. I mean, you've been to, I mean, you've been to almost all the countries in the world or where, wherever. And then we go to Korea or we go to Brazil and we're ecstatic about it. And it's our first time being in like a culture shock um, sort of thing. And sometimes we get a little timid or scared ab- about that. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just really beautiful that it, that no, there, there's no set limit. There's no age limit. Like, I don't know why our brains, um, tell us that there's this age limit or mm-hmm. view number well, associated with that. Does that make sense? Yeah, but there's such a culture around it right now of like counting countries, which I personally like, and there's nothing wrong with somebody is one of those people but like, I hate that. Like I genuinely cannot stand it. But you too? <laughs> You're like, yeah. I have started so many writing captions being, starting about being like, I have, because people ask like how many countries you've been to. I'm like, I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. I know I've been to less than 10. I still couldn't tell you. I'm like, I think is it eight or nine? But, like I still can't tell well, you. And I feel like when people yeah. do the whole check, checking off list and I understand some of it, I understand that some of it's just like a goal, goal and yeah. it gets you there. And yeah. you know, that's what it is. But when, when you create something like that, it no longer becomes about the culture. It no longer becomes about the people that you're meeting. Experience. It's just a number and a checklist. And yeah. You it, fly through the country. Like I see people fly in countries and they're there 48 hours. And they're like, I I hit my 91st country. I'm like, did you really though? Like, tell me something about it. Like, what did you see past the airport? Now, this is just where I'm getting condescending. So I should probably just like cut this out, I guess. But um, that's definitely a pet peeve is like, I, the country counting. I, but I have to agree. I think the, the through line is like when you're traveling, do it for the experience, not it's like the journey, not the destination, right? It's like go and be there and like 
fully immerse. And I think when it, it's like, it's like conquering almost. It's like modern day conquering. It's like, oh, I did this thing. And it's like, but like, did you enjoy it? Like what, what, like what about it made you like more of a, like a new person? Like what, what did you take away from it besides just being like, I did something like you want to like build, it's like a constant, I think traveling is building character. It's like, oh, I, I really learned this about myself in Rome. Like I've really learned this about my, myself in Chamonix. It's like, what can you take away instead of just being like, oh, I went there. And it's like, well, yeah. And you probably got some cool pictures, but like, what, what else? Like there is more, there is so much more. So like dig in, like let it be slow and messy and chaotic. And like, I don't know. I agree with you guys. So that's, yeah, hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. You think you said something along the lines of when you travel, you like to feel like you live there. Yeah. Is that, did you say something like that earlier? Yes. Yeah. I, we're the same way. And so maybe that's just like how we both view travel is like, you want to truly experience like what it's like to be a local. Maybe that's picking a neighborhood, getting yeah. to know that neighborhood or, I don't know. Maybe I know everybody's not like that. So I don't want to put them in my little bubble or box of what I think travel should be. But um, yeah, for me, it's about experiences. And on the flip side of that, I think like experiences, even though we all didn't start traveling till we were a little bit older, like I don't want to undervalue the, that we spent those earlier years getting different experiences. Yeah. Cause I know that I worked really hard. I was in school. Like I put my time and efforts into working minimum wage jobs, which I think built a heck of a lot of character, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like we may not have traveled and gotten the world experiences, but there's still experience that was, yeah. that was gained. My one recommendation for people who like want to, um, not necessarily don't travel exactly like me, but if you do want to immerse yourself in a culture, instead of going out to eat, go to the grocery store. My biggest thing is like, go to the grocery mm -hmm. store. That is like one step of being like, I'm immersed in like, what are people eating in this culture? Because it's such a shared experience. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. That's my one recommendation. And 100%. I- 100%. 100%. Yeah, and I love one, that. One. Even even in the US, we do that. We love going to like, yeah. Ben has a great grocery store. Yeah. And like, I love walking in there like, what's local here? Like, mm -hmm. but international is even better. You know, you get to see like, what- what can I find? Yeah. Well, and then it, it's even better when you come home, and, you know, from whatever country, and then you see it in that section at your grocery store. You're like, I had never once saw that before. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's so good. And I think to comment on traveling later in life, I think one thing, and I'm, I wouldn't change my experience. I think if I ever did decide to have kids, I, I think that that might be something that I would incorporate. I, I would be curious to have them travel young. Like I was at my physical therapist's um, office the other day and she's telling me, she's like, no, when I, my mat leave, I took my son, we were backpacking in Mexico. And I'm like, that is so cool. And like, just because I didn't have the experience, I think it sets my eyes as being like, okay, I can't change. I can't go back in time. But would I change that and make it a part of the next generation's like character and curiosity? Maybe. We're the same. I think yeah. we're the same. If we were our kids, I, yeah, I think we'd love to introduce them because it's something I wanted. I just didn't get, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of different ways to do life. I know that's sort of a cliche, but no, it's true. Well There's a lot yeah. of ways to do it. So when you're moving to a new place or, um, you know, you're, you're transitioning, whatever you're traveling and then you're posting on Instagram. I mean, you've got a decent size following on Instagram. You, you said earlier that, you know, sometimes you'll meet people, you know, or, you know, you'll have relationships because of social media. Mm -hmm. So when you are posting about this online are, like what's kind of the mindset that you go into like when you're sharing a place or uh, just about your experience and, you know, posting to thousands of people who, who may see it or just kind of walk with you during that? Mm, that's a really good question. I think one thing that is tricky is my, I don't know if necessarily my social media is travel. It's like this weird combination of like trail running. It's just me. It's like all my random things. I'm never really like reviewing a place. I kind of share a little thing as piecemeal, but like never like here's my review, um, which I could do, but I haven't felt super compelled. So I kind of just share more about the feelings and the like the senses. Like though I share more about like what I, cause I don't, I can't, I don't know what other people will experience. Like for the Azores, I wrote kind of about like how you like the senses and the smells and the the feelings of being there and like what came up for me. But I like to keep it localized to me so that if someone goes and I'm like, go to these places, these are the best. I don't, I'm kind of like off the hook. I'm like, I, I will share my, thoughts, yeah, but I'm like kind sure. of scared to share. I'm like, these were great. <laughs> yeah. That's a me thing. So yeah, that always gives me a little bit of, <laughs> 
whew, you guys are like much better than I am. I'm like, that freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> no, that we've said, there's this place, this is kind of off topic, but Chris told some of our friends they were traveling oh the, the country for a year in this like massive Winnebago RV. Huge RV. And yeah. he told him, he's like, I'm like, you've got to go to Pie Town. Pie Town. Drive your RV to Pie Town, New Mexico. New Mexico. And it's on top of this like massive mountain in the desert. There's nothing there. And they, gr granted, when I went, I was riding my bicycle across America and I stopped and we got pie, you know, and it was amazing. And like, anything's great when it's like 95 degrees and you've been biking for 100 miles. <laughs> True. So these people traveled all the way from Tennessee. They're like, they made Pie Town a destination stop in their huge RV. And then months later, I didn't hear from them. We didn't hear from them. Okay. And months later, we finally like sat down and like, hey, I mean, did you ever make it to Pie Town? And you saw the soul just be sucked out of their so eyes. Bad. Just like, <laughs> and they're the nicest people, but it was I was like, this is the last time we give a recommendation and call it the best. <laughs> it's like yeah. no, Pie apparently it was best. not a good idea to drive that RV up there. So. <laughs> so I get what you mean. Like everybody's everybody's judgment's different. You especially with just friends, you're like, oh, you have to go here. And then they're like, this is not this like I don't get it. <laughs> that was us in Tulum last week. We got we had so many recommendations for Tulum, and I didn't get it. But yeah. somebody else loves it. I don't know. Just yeah. everybody has their own opinions. Yeah. Let's end it with uh, two things. Uh, first will be a piece of advice you want to leave people with for if they're starting over. I know this conversation kind of deviated off of like the starting over in life and ended up a little bit in the travel and adventure. But uh, if you have a piece of advice for someone maybe in their 20s, 30s, 40s who is thinking about making a big move, like what piece of advice do you want to leave them with? Mm. I think the, um, besides the advice I kind of mentioned earlier, I would say if you want to make a move, if you're feeling it, like if you really like are closing out the rest of the world, like really going inside and being like, okay, like things are quiet, do it. Cause like living with the question of what would have happened if I had done it is not, you just don't, that's not great. That's not a great feeling to have. And if you are going to have any inkling of regret, which is not a feeling anyone should have, um, do it, do it, do it for the plot, do it for the story, do it for the adventure, like listen to yourself, put everything, everything else aside and trust yourself, take the jump. Like it's scary. And also I think a big part of it is you don't have to do it alone. Like don't be afraid to ask for help. I think there's a lot of pride and ego that goes into being like, I did this alone. And it's like, yes, and you don't have to. Like, ask your friends, share with your community. And yeah, just um, be, yeah, be be yourself and and just put yourself out there. Just try. Oh, good. That's really good. I'm like, yeah, let's go do it. <laughs> I want to go move again. <laughs> oh, okay. So last question will be, where can people find you online? We'll link it all down below, but if you just want to go ahead and say where you're at on social media. Of course. So I am at Liz Fieser on Instagram, TikTok, LizFieser.com. I'm pretty across the board, just my name, Liz Fieser. I'm so jealous of people who have names that are like easy to get. I don't know, I man. I think Sarah Aho would be easy, but you, you have one? Beezer? I mean, <laughs> Beezer's pretty bad. Like no one actually can pronounce it. So it's like one of those weird names that like, yes, you can spell it, but pronouncing it, no way. I think I said Pfizer before the conversation. So I hope I didn't say that early in the podcast. <laughs> it is normal. You're <laughs> Sorry. <It's> normal. <laughs> cool. Well, you can find her. We'll link everything down below. But Liz, thank you so much for talking with us. This is fun. Yeah, thank you both. And I hope our paths cross, whether in Chattanooga or elsewhere in the world. We'll make it happen for sure. For sure. <laughs> awesome. Have a good one. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for listening to What No One Tells You with Chris and Sarah. If you have a comment or question that you want answered on the air, be sure to send us a message to hello at chrisandsarah.com or you can call or text our phone number at 423-825-9572. Thanks for listening.